Boston versus Salford. I'm not even sure what intro to play. Run the correct one, for heaven's sake. viewers welcome back to boston versus Sol for today then uh, i might have already entered the match room and forgot to hit record so welcome it's a good start isn't it viewers? it's a good start let's cheer ourselves up shall we mark fletcher seven goals this season what's that da, 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 marky fletcher ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, 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 marky fletcher Boom. Yeah, we're loving it, aren't we? I'm watching these videos back just to be a part of it. So hopefully you're enjoying it live. So today then, Salford and Torquay will be our opposition. And the, the, the ridiculous part of this, by the way, is that we play them within three days. We only have a one-day break in between. But I thought it'd be good to showcase the team a little bit. Showcase the squad a little bit as well. So you need to get to know some of these boys. We've made 10, 15 acquisitions this, this summer. So you've got to get to know some of the players involved. And speaking of which then, let's run you through the team that has already been selected for today's game. But we'll go through it regardless. Uh, Federici will be in goal once again. Evans, the fire and Cantrell remain in that back four. But Akuma comes in um, at the right centre-back spot. We've got a little injury to Charlie Oliver, so he won't be playing today. Uh, Brookwell will be the defensive midfielder. Burton and Gribben in the centre. Burton comes in for Lawrence, who's struggling a little bit. Alibiusu on one side. Penny on the other and Marky Fletcher in the in the forward positions. There we are. So hopefully today then we can uh, showcase how good our squad is. I'm going to go straight into this game against Salford, who, if I very briefly remind you, uh, you can see are the the favourites for the division this season. We're just behind uh, Chesterfield Yeovil. Carlisle in there as well. Recently relegated Carlisle have some really good footballers. Um, so we're going to have to be aware of them. Players like this, who while not very quick, Ryan Taylor, very capable, especially those mental attributes. Yeah, they've got some really good footballers. So keep an eye on Carlisle throughout the season. They're yet to lose this year. Um, but it must be said, they've also only won two matches, so they've drawn three. Right then, time to get at them. Uh, Salford City, let's have it. And now we can actually play the game rather than forgetting to hit start recording. So that went well. Here we go then. It's weird for me to play Salford. Uh, Team-wise, I don't think there's too many players in that side that were there when I were there. In fact, I don't think any of them are. Although, uh, Bigiri Manor, that's hard to say. I think I signed him when at Salford. So that, that is a funny coincidence. Right then. Uh, there's been an injury early. <gasps> uh, okay, well, that's... No, thank you. Harvey Neville's going to come on just to confuse Phil Neville. I mean, who does he root for now? His son or the club that he partially owns? Um, but that could be a bad injury to Alibusu. That could be huge. A potential arm injury. No, never mind then. He can still run. Just strap that up. Play on, mate. Not a problem. Maybe he's just saving himself for the Torquay game, which I fully am on board with. But we saw last episode. It was a good win. Um, it's whether we can keep that going now and uh, beat sides like Salford, who we know are very good. It's been one of the most disappointing halves of football I can remember. Oh, wait, no, yesterday. Oh, yeah, yesterday. What's up? That's just no, nothing. Nothing happened. An injury. That's all that happened. I'm going to get a little bit aggressive here. I'm going to say I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen. Fire them up. I'll send them out for that second half. And we did it yesterday. I'm going to do it again. Let's demand a little more in, in the first sort of moments of this second half. It worked yesterday. They are focused. They are focused once again. Harry Neville's nervous and who can blame him? Uncle Gary's here. Phil's here. They're all here. And Penny's picked up an injury as well. So... With about half an hour to go, I'm not going to risk George Penny any further. Ben Morris is going to come on and him and Neville are going to switch round. We're going to change Neville to that inside forward role that we played him in last to the season. Um, we still have David Cartwright who can come on. And Mark Fletcher, not having the best game so far. So maybe we'll give him 10 more minutes and then we might have to think about a change as there's a highlight. But I think this highlight occurs because I've made changes. As Cantrell goes for it and hits the side net in. 71% possession for us in this game so far and little goal mouth action. I think we're going to see uh, Cartwright come on. The Kosovan, remember David Cartwright from Crystal Palace on loan. Um, role wise, I'm going to change him to an advanced forward. I, I'm only playing the poacher role really with, with uh, Mr. Fletcher because he's a natural in it or he's most natural in it. Let's see if Cartwright can make the difference. 10 minutes left to go in one of the most boring matches since yesterday, viewers. I've gone slightly more positive for the final 10 minutes or final 5 minutes, but it looks as if Nothing's coming of it. Both defensive defences have had pretty good games. But I've got to say, and there's a final highlight here from Gribbon towards Morris. You've got to say, away at Salford, I mean, I know it's not been entertaining or exciting, but it has been efficient. We've largely dominated the game as well. And for a side that are supposed to win the, this, the league this season, getting a point away from home and not conceding, keeping a clean sheet... For me, it's pretty massive. So I'm going to take the positives from this and not look too downbeat about it. 
Obviously, I'd rather have beaten them 3-0, but you can't have everything you need. So calmly say, um, I'm just going to say you're unlucky tonight, which isn't necessarily true, but I want to keep morale relatively high. I mean, unlucky, it was a pretty even game. Neither, neither side exactly dominated, as I've messed up part, part of that team talk. Well done, me. I guess the bigger concern is I didn't make changes uh, in the game that really helped us. We did. We were forced into it from injuries, really. And uh, you can see here now, Alan, a torn wrist ligament. Are you serious? And he's not going to play on with that. Are you joking? George Penny, he's out with a calf strain as well. They're both out for weeks. Well, this has put a spanner in the works. Both of our first choice wingers, unavailable. And we may well see uh, James Sayer come in now on that left side. In fact, I'm not going to waste any time, viewers. In he comes. Out on the right-hand side, Harvey Neville is the most obvious of choices. But, um, yeah, that is a bit of a blow, actually. I mean, John Slew, we didn't think we'd see much of him this season. We may well see him feature at some point. All right, a couple of days before this Torquay match then. They're 21st in the league table. Um, so it should be pretty routine. Oh, Pozzo doesn't look happy about the fact he's been left out. Well, I've got good news, Pozzo. You'll be playing the next game, and I can say that to him, and he'll be, he'll be loving life. I'll start you in the next few games, just because I don't have a choice because of fitness. These little these little players just moaning, coming into my office. Knock, knock, knock. Can I come in, boss? No, you can't. I'm busy. What are you doing? Never, never you mind. All right, uh, James Blanchfield is off out on loan as well. He's just a, a squad player that is not in the squad plans. So he's just just a player, if anything. Player! Not like that, all right? He's a, he's a very mature human being. 23 now. In his younger years, yeah, all right? He was a, he's a devilish little so-and-so. But these days, I'm just creating a backstory, and he's a real person. I really shouldn't. Okay, Torquay to come next then. Uh, Torquay, oh yes, 21st in the league. Only won one game this season. So hopefully we can do the business against them. Uh, I think our midfield does need a bit of a, a refresh. So uh, we'll, we'll bring out... Um, We'll bring out, what's his name? Brookwell, that's right. <laughs> bring Pozzo in instead. <laughs> just just looking around. Who was it? Kind of got very confused. Uh, we should, I mean, Pozzo's also struggling for fitness, which isn't ideal. They're both struggling. All right, we might see some changes mid-game here then, as uh, Matthew Smith is going to come onto the bench. I mean, we could always play Anderson, actually, in the centre. In fact, let's do that. Let's completely rotate this midfield. Uh, let's get Smith into the game a little bit, and then let's bring in Anderson to play in the Mazala role and uh, just have players on the bench that can maybe come on and do something. Robbie Burton's not particularly tired, so we'll put him uh, in contention as well. Right then, let's see how we go. As uh, What's Chris Lawrence's injury? Let's just see this here. Bruised ankle. It's not a good enough reason not to be on the bench, Chris. Chris is on there instead because he's he's nearly fully fit. Right. In fact, Pozzo really should be playing this, but we're doing it anyway. Uh, Team-wise then, Federici in goal. Evans, Akuma, Defire, Cantrill, Pozzo, Smith, Anderson, Neville, Sayer, Fletcher. We were rotating here. We have definitely rotated a lot. So this is going to be exciting to see how we fare with so much rotation. Game on. Really, we're looking for, for Marky Fletcher to do the business. All right, because in that last game, I think we can all agree, viewers, it wasn't good enough. We didn't see him touch the ball, it feels like, as they've gone for a 5-2-1-2 system. Uh, they've got a, a guy up top called Scrimshaw, which I just quite like. Jake Scrimshaw. I quite like that name. Scrimshaw. I just I, Say it. Go on. Together. One, two, three. Scrimshaw. Oh, it felt good. Let me know how you felt about it. Okay, let's see how we do then. Um... I've got to try and stop Scrimshaw. That's the real devilish problem I've got here. Right, let's give these fans a performance they're expecting. We're at home. I mean, Cantrell's already pissed off. So that's gone. Oh, he's, 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 no, sorry, my mistake. He's actually fine. I don't, I mean, he's, he doesn't know what to think or believe or what or say. Uh, Boston United then versus Torquay. Let's have it. Now, of course, we are in the orange. Uh, they are in the blue. It's, 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 it's orange. It's orange, isn't it? Let's face it. It's orange. Marky Fletcher. Bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. I'm just trying to... Da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da Marky Fletcher. I'm just trying to really uh, improve like his performance levels by chanting from the sidelines. It's unusual to see a manager do it. Don't get me wrong. But um, something's got to give. It's Neville. He gets involved there. Can he find Marky Fletcher? It goes towards the back post, maybe. Defensively, it's quite good work. But they're panicking a little bit. They're at sixes and sevens back there as the fire knocks on towards Anderson, who tries to flick it on. And the ball finally breaks by way of Torquay, who have got a chance to maybe do something. A scrimshaw gets it. I'm terrified. And also, in awe of his name, goes out to cover on that side as it's played in. Deflected. Morris Wallace. It's a great finish. Morris Wallace. That sounded good as well. Jazz Wallace, he's fancy. He's got the uh, the goal for Torquay, and they take a one nil, a shock one nil lead. Did not see this coming, viewers. This is a turn up for the books. But when Scrimshaw's involved, this will happen. As uh, we are a little bit unfortunate, in my opinion, it sort of deflects off the head, I think, of one of our defenders. But it's a great finish from Wallace. I mean, take nothing away from him. 
although I have spent the last 10 seconds there trying to take it away from him. Uh, chance for us, perhaps, as Pozzo is happy to be in the game today, and uh, he finds Matthew Smith, who's become a sort of a peripheral figure in a Boston shirt, as uh, Evans out on that side. Ball in, Sayers there, it's Neville, it's two goals in the game. Nearly got that wrong. <laughs> one goal apiece, Boston United one, Torquay one. I got overexcited, viewers, right? It happens to the best of us, as uh, Smith involved, plays it out to Evans, of course, the replacement for Minivan. As uh, Evans plays it across, and then, I don't know, Sayer kind of gets under it a little bit, and then Neville's finish is good, and the Torquay fans behind the goal look broken. 1-1. One, one. Well, anything Jazz can do, we can do just as well. Oh, good. Harvey Neville, who's just got the goal. He's now our third winger uh, today to get injured. I guess we're going to bring on uh, Ben Morris out on that side. It makes logical sense. As, uh, well, Jordan Slew will be on the bench next game, it seems. Kebby, free kick to Torquay towards that back post. Oh, would Minivan have done that, viewers? Would he? I don't think he would have done. It's a penalty kick to Torquay there, and then number nine stepping up. It better not be Scrimshaw. Oh, it is. If Scrimshaw steps up and sends Federici the wrong way. Torquay 2, Boston United 1. That's Jake Scrimshaw's third goal of the game. I'm just, I've, I've never said Scrimshaw so much in my entire life. I've just never seen the words combine. Scrimshaw. I'm enjoying it. All right, 25 minutes gone, and uh, with Torquay in the lead and a big injury issue for us as well i guess it's going to be an interesting time for the second half as we get closer towards it we're going to be slightly more positive I've, I've come to realize that we are supposed to be the better side here and despite our changes uh, in the side today i was really hoping our squad depth would shine through you can tell by the way their squad depth is an issue because they are all struggling for fitness so this second half could be key it's quite clear that similar to us really they've had a game on the saturday and now i assume is the monday and they are really struggling as a result of that and i think the best move for us now is to bring callum gribben on take pozzo off forget him and uh, maybe push forward gribben a little bit further to play right behind fletcher and give him a little bit more support we should be able to out run them essentially second half they should be tiring as the game goes on i'm going to say everyone's expecting a much better performance they're not overly bothered and then passionately say looking for more to come from you come on disappointed in your efforts in midfield and then in attack let's calmly say you need to calm down <laughs> oh mark fletcher's just confused i don't really know why i said it because he, he, he was pretty passive as it was okay come on we need to try and get something back into this and i'm, I'm hoping our fitness is is the difference maker you look at sort of our midfield and attack compared to their defence and midfield, then really this should be ours for the taking. It's a free kick to Torquay, though. Federici saves, sort of, as James Morris puts it in. It's piss poor from Boston in this game. And it's been a while, isn't it, viewers, since we last saw us get sort of stunned a little bit. But Torquay are giving it a right old go. It's poor from Federici. I mean, he makes the first save, but doesn't get rid of the danger at all. Creates more danger, if anything. And now after 57 minutes, it's a throw in to the Boston boys as Gribbins ball forward to Fletcher he's quite magnificent Fletcher gets there puts the ball into the centre cleared away though Hall heads clear as well and now Jazz Wallace brings it forward with his with his saxophone in, in check I don't know what I'm saying I'm just, I am just I went for I thought Jazz I went saxophone right things happened uh, Evans now with it out to Morris and maybe a counter attack for us as we break forward with it Morris now can he find a ball forward he can say it's there it's a great shot but an even better save for McDonald in fact really the shot should have been either side of him and it would have been a goal Gribbins now with the corner to try and make amends towards Fletcher. It's a free kick to Torquay as Marky Fletcher's not having his best outing today. And another free kick. Well, highlights are plenty here. Federici, get off my pitch. I haven't got another goalkeeper on the bench. Oh, no. Mayuba with a fantastic free kick. And it's taking me back to the chest today's viewers. 4-1 down and a little bit of a humbling for the Boston boys. It's, uh, just whatever. Federici there. I mean, I've given him the chance, the experience of Federici, and he's just, what he's doing for you is he's letting me down big style -y. Uh Gribben's got it, though. I mean, there's still time. There's, there's half an hour to go, and this game has been highlight-packed. You've got to say, it's Morris now. Gets beyond the back four. Well, lovely stuff. Great goal from Sawyer. I'll say back four. It's a back five, isn't it? 4-2. And these boys don't look like they're over and done with this game just yet. It's a lovely ball from Akuma uh, forward. That really is a sensational pass. And Morris gets onto it. Lovely ball pulled back. And there's Sayer to put it in. I think I might have called him Sawyer before. That was incorrect. I mean, Marky Fletcher. I'm going to keep him out there because I, I trust and believe in him. But so far, we're seeing very little. I'm even going to go attacking to try and get these last two goals or produce something. I mean, there's a highlight here. 77 minutes gone. There's still time for our boys to get back into this. As they tire, if they get a second goal, well, if they get a fifth goal, sorry, a second goal of this half. Is it a second goal of this half? A few goals. That, they're forward. Owens, ball in, into the centre, and they've scored again. Brilliant. <sighs> I'm just disappointed, viewers. I think that's the overall, an overriding feeling right now. 
I'm just sad. It's not going great. I was expecting more from Marky Fletcher, but at, at this stage, he's let me down. David Cartwright's coming on. Let's see if it works. Da -da -da. David Cartwright. <sighs> No, 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 no. Too many syllables, it feels like. And probably the same amount, but oh no, it just feels wrong. Marky Fletcher. He's off the pitch. I mean, we could score a goal now, but three in four minutes seems most unlikely. As the ball forward to Cartwright, I mean, if he scores from there, we'll we'll change the song, if, if, if absolutely necessary. Evans, in Dan, into Anderson, finds Morris again. He's been bright since he's come on. Gripping back to Morris. Is he going to shoot on goal here? Finds Cartwright. Well, hmm, what a, that is a conundrum. Um... I'll just give him a dick, like a, I'm free, ding. I mean, that's a very old reference if anyone's on board with that. I'm free. If you're over 40, you might know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Cartwright slots home and um, it looks like an unlikely comeback might be starting. Mm, there's little to no time left and uh, these two games in quick succession have undone us. It's fair to say, viewers, not ideal in the slightest. A nil-nil against Salford, which would seem like a good result, but when you lose the, uh, the following game to Torquay, it absolutely isn't, as uh, this looks like the race has been run. Really poor from us. Our midfield, clearly in rotation, has not been anywhere near as successful as when it's at full strength, and that is a lesson learnt, perhaps, for going, going to the rest of the season. It's pretty damning of some of these players who finally get an opportunity and they've not quite lived up to it. I'm going to say they're not good enough today and the boys seem motivated and uh, yeah, not what we were hoping for at all. Matthew Smith and the like have got some questions to answer as now, four to five weeks out, goodness me, Harvey Neville is also unavailable and now three of our first choice wingers are going to be unavailable for the foreseeable future and how will we fare without them? I guess you'll find out next time. Uh, next time you meet then, I think we'll aim towards that Hartlepool game. They were top of the table last time we checked. Uh, Barrow up there with older shots. So, I mean, there's, there's an older shot game in there. Maybe whoever's top of the table, I think we'll probably face off against. In theory, we should be close with them uh, in playoff contention. If you've enjoyed today's video, though, please do drop a like on it. If you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again tomorrow for more at 5pm. And, um, come on, go on. No. We're not doing it. I cocked it up big time.